should i make a video on this so friends welcome back to our channel learn with gigs this video is the most awaited video of this year on this channel this is the most demanding topic which you wanted me to create a video which is how to create a ats friendly resume for a fresher or for an aspiring data analyst i will be focusing on data analyst resume in this video this video will contain all the important points that you have to keep in mind while creating a resume and also there is a bonus at the end of this video so do watch this video completely till the end because it will be a game changer for you because it will help you to stand out from the crowd and secure a job in this current market situation so let's start the video and before that if you are new to the channel then do subscribe the channel for more useful videos like this and also you can follow my instagram page learn with gigs for job related regular updates plus short videos on data analytics domain all right you know the importance of resume how important it is to craft your resume properly which is ats friendly also and at the same time it looks very interactive and attractive because you know any recruiter gives hardly 8 to 10 seconds to your resume and if they don't find it attractive and relevant they will just ignore your resume and they will shift towards another candidate's resume because these recruiters are completely non technical right they don't know about technical terms of data analytics right so that's why from the recruiter's point of view we have to create the resume so that we give ourselves the best chance from the resume selection point of view so you can understand how your resume plays a most important role for to give you an interview call so first of all i will discuss what all things you don't have to put on your resume so the first thing is you should not use your photograph on the resume if your photograph is present then it is not ats friendly remove your photograph immediately second thing is don't put your personal information on your resume you should not put your complete address you should not talk about your marital status all those not important at all and the third thing is which is also very important you should not put your hobbies your interest or any kind of irrelevant information it will not help you to get your resume selected so that's why remove this section also so i hope what you don't have to put you are clear with that now let's understand what all things we need to put on our resume so the first thing that you should keep in your mind is your resume should be of one page right that is very important because as i said in the starting recruiter gives hardly 8 to 10 seconds so if you'll make your resume to two page or three page they won't read at all right because you have to make them centralized so that's why it's very important to create a one page resume and this is applicable for 0 to 3 year of experience people also all of you should understand the importance of a one page resume so this is the first thing that you should keep in your mind you should select the template like that only the next thing that you should keep in your mind is the format the format of your resume that is also very important it should include all the important sections which is required plus at the same time the font style that you are using on your resume that should also be consistent it should not be using fancy fancy font styles it should be simple so that it is more readable on the top you will mention your name you will mention your gmail id link you will mention your location you will mention your mobile number and you will mention your linkedin and project portfolio link these are the important things that you should put on the top because these are very important for any kind of communication with you so that's why these should be on the top and clickable links should be there you should not attach the whole link for example if you have to attach gmail id so you should write gmail and make that word as link similarly if you want to attach your portfolio link write project portfolio and make that word clickable link so this should be on your top the next thing should be your summary right summary is also very important and i have seen a lot of people writing a lot of bullet points under summary no you should not write like that otherwise you will not be able to put things on a single page you should write the summary in short and precise manner in 3 to 4 lines that's it talking about your exact skill set and your functional areas that's it so i hope that is clear to you the next section is technical skill section so on the top your related information the next thing is summary after that technical skills it is very important to put technical skill section on the top because whenever we read anything we read from top to bottom not from bottom to top right so that's why we need to put our technical skills on the top only i have seen a lot of one page resume format also where the technical skills are presented at the bottom from my experience i can say to you it is not the right way you should put technical skills on the top after summary so in the technical skills it's very important to use all the relevant keywords through which recruiter searches right and that will also help you to get more impressions on nokri.com 
Relevant keywords also includes your functional areas like data modeling, data visualization, data warehousing. So you should include all those things under technical skills only because it creates a direct impression in interviewer's mind that yes, this person knows all these skill sets and has experience in these functional areas too. In the technical skills, I have seen people writing just Power BI, SQL, Excel, Python, 234 keywords. That's it. They think that they have put the exact keywords in the technical skills. No, they haven't. We need to write more. For example, if you're writing Power BI, so Power BI has two main important components, right? Power BI desktop, Power BI service. And both of these keywords are very important because they help in searching for the right candidate. So you have to include Power BI desktop also, Power BI service also, right? Many people write Excel, but you should not write Excel. You should write advanced Excel. You should write pivot tables because these are important keywords through which you will be searched. So these things you have to keep in mind while drafting the technical skills. Once you are done with the technical skills, then comes your work experience section. So many of you who will be fresher, you won't be having any kind of experience, real time experience, right? So in that case, you have two options. Either you can go for a data analytics internship, right? If you have done any kind of internship, that is good. You can put that under work experience and the duration for which you have worked. And suppose if you don't have an internship experience, in that case, what you should do? In that case, you should talk about your virtual experience. Now, what is virtual experience? So virtual internships will act as the virtual experience here. And how to do virtual internships? So you have few options like you have uh, like forest.com, right? That platform provides PwC virtual internship, Accenture data analytics virtual internship and few other companies internship. So you can talk about those virtual internship or you can talk about the Sparks Foundation. If you follow this page on LinkedIn, they also provide a one month virtual internship in data analytics. So you can go through that virtual internship also and you can talk about these two, three virtual internships in your work experience section. It will help you to make your resume strong from work experience point of view. Now, once you're done with the work experience section, the next section is project section. That is very, very important as a fresher, as an aspiring data analyst or with some experience also. So what you have to keep in mind, you have to put two Power BI projects, one SQL project, one Excel project and one Python project so that it covers all your existing skill sets and gives a clear indication that you have practical project knowledge in all of these skills. And when you will be talking about Power BI projects in that try to utilize SQL also along with Power BI in your Power BI project because it looks great if you have done any Power BI project including SQL. Don't try to put projects where only you have utilized Excel along with Power BI because that everyone is doing, right? So how to make yourself stand out to put projects where you've utilized SQL also along with Power BI for a Power BI project. The other important point is whatever project you should mention, you should mention the unguided projects. Don't put the projects which are easily available on YouTube or anywhere else on any other social media because those projects are everybody is doing, right? How will you make yourself stand out? For that, you need to put unguided projects, right? So two Power BI unguided projects, one SQL unguided project, one Excel project, one Python project. That's how you will make yourself different from other freshers because 95% of the freshers are doing the same mistake. They don't know how to create a right resume. So that's why this video is important, very important for you to understand what you have to put exactly on your resume, which can help you to get the interview call and eventually get a job. Another important point to keep in mind is whenever you are showcasing the project, try to put the direct link of those projects also. Because if there is a recruiter and if they want to see your Power BI project or SQL project, they can directly click on that link and it should take them to your portfolio project where you have actually hosted your projects. So in that way, they can directly interact with your live projects which you have created and ultimately it will basically convince them to give you the interview call. So that's why I put the direct link of the projects also under project section for every project. So this constitutes your project section. The next section is your education section. Here you don't have to put about your history. You just put your highest degree that you have attained. For any data analyst position, graduation is a prerequisite. So try to put graduation under that, your duration of the graduation and put the percentage also. If it is greater than 75%, you can put it. If it is lower than that, don't put the percentage, only write about the degree name. That's it under education section. And the last section is achievement section. Under achievement section, again, it's very important to put what kind of achievement you are putting under that. If you have authentic certificates, like if you have done hacker rank SQL certificate, if you have done PL300 Microsoft Power BI certification, then your achievement section becomes very important. It will stand out among other resumes. But I've seen a lot of people who don't have 
the certificates from microsoft tried or even hacker rank certification it is completely fine if you don't have it since we should put the achievement section also so if you have done any kind of online course also which is good then you can talk about those courses also under achievement section and try to use only two to three bullet points under that talking about your certificates that's it nothing so these whole sections whatever i've discussed should be on one page and yes it can be put on one page because many people say no we can't put all this information in one page it is possible and you can do it on one page itself so the bonus point that i was talking about in the starting was that you will provide a link in the comment box where you will find a ats friendly power bi resume template which you can utilize for yourself because that resume I have created personally and which is ATS friendly also and I will provide that in Word document only so you can utilize that edit it as per your requirements and make the best use of it and I hope you should get the interview call utilizing that very soon so it takes a lot of effort to provide free content for you so do hit the like button of this video and subscribe the channel if you haven't till now and share this video to all your friends and colleagues whoever are in need of this as this can be a game changer for them